Hi, I'm Lee Nash, pastor of Spark United Methodist Church. Welcome to worship and welcome to spring training. That's right, we are in the midst of a five message series on the practices that make us more able to follow Jesus more closely. Those of us in the church oftentimes refer to this as Lent. They're practices that we engage in in preparation for the Easter festival that comes later in the, in the season. But uh, whether you call it Lent or spring training, uh, we're kind of making an analogy with baseball. You know, there are five practices in, in baseball that you need to get better and better and better at as you move up from the minor leagues to the major leagues. There are five practices in the Christian faith that as you get better at, you follow Jesus more closely. Those five practices are worship and pray, study, serve, give, and share. And today, we're right in the midst of those five practices. We're gonna take a look at what it means to serve, to serve God, to serve Christ, and particularly to serve one another. Welcome to worship. Michelle Scarborough and I will be reading today's scripture. It's from the Gospel of Matthew, 
chapter 25, verses 35 through 40. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. You know, in the game of baseball, there has to be a pitcher. And the pitcher ascends onto the pitcher mound and oftentimes will go through uh, habits or routines to wind up and to serve the pitch to the batter. And that's one of the most exciting parts of the game. Uh, a lot of times people, people's eyes will be fixed, their gaze will be on that pitcher and see how the pitcher uh, pitches the ball. There are all kinds of ways that a pitcher may choose to pitch, but it all means in one way or another serving that ball to the batter. There are all kinds of ways for those of us who are practicing the Christian faith to serve one another. And when Jesus was asked, well, what is the most important of all of the law and the prophets? Jesus simply says this, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and you must love your neighbor as yourself. How do we love our neighbor? Well, most often we love our neighbor by serving our neighbor. And uh, some years ago, when I first came to Sparks United Methodist Church as the, the appointed pastor, I was sitting in my office and noticing uh, who was then our office manager getting up multiple times a day, walking out the, the office door, running across the parking lot with somebody who was asking for food, going to this little cabinet and getting out a bag of assorted food, giving it to the, the person who was asking for food, sending him on his, his way, and then coming back across the parking lot. The whole thing took maybe uh, 10 or 12 minutes, and that practice was repeated multiple times a day, and I'm thinking there's gotta be a better way to serve those who are in need of food, those who are hungry. We got to talking about it and decided we were going to partner with the Northern Nevada Food Bank and see if we can more effectively and even more efficiently serve people who are in need of food. You know, now every Tuesday from about 12.30 to 3.30, these, these are the official hours of our food pantry. We have some 30 volunteers who gather to serve more than 100 people, oftentimes meaning that we're serving 300 families with food that they need for uh, sustenance. That's every week. We have a uh, food desert around our place. It's people who go without food, um, people who live in cars and need food that doesn't take a lot of preparation. There are all kinds of clients that come and make use of our food bank. Uh, are we loving our neighbor? Yes, we are. We are loving them by serving them. And in this case, we're serving them food. Now there are a whole variety of ways that churches help people gather together to love their neighbors. All kinds of ways that churches help people serve their neighbors. We do this here in a, in a variety of ways. Uh, we try to find out who does something well and surround them with other people who want to learn. Do you know one of the best ways to express yourself through service is to partner with somebody else who is already serving in the way you aspire to serve. We, we call it a mentoring relationship. So we stand by and we watch how somebody serves another person. 
And then we join them in serving. And then the mentor stands by and watches us serve. And it's a process that helps us grow in our ability, uh, our effectiveness in serving our neighbors. There are other ways that we serve as well. We have a visitation team uh, that will visit people who are homebound, who are unable to leave their homes. Sometimes they visit folks who are in the hospital or who are in a convalescent home. They're there to express love to them. Is that a form of service? Of course it is. They may not be serving through actual clinical practice of, uh, of healing, but they're serving through the gift of compassion. They have it upon their hearts to love those who are going through a season of difficulty when it comes to health and physical issues. That is a beautiful way that people have come to serve. We have a group of people called the All in the Family team, and uh, this team gets together multiple times of the year to serve families with children within and outside the church. One of my favorite events is uh, the Pumpkin Patch. We have volunteers coming and uh, people from all over the community. A lot of times we have parents with children who pick out pumpkins and we sell them the pumpkins and that money goes to help us uh, help those who need a, a real home cooked me meal once a week, once a month with our community cafe. And then as the culmination of October, we throw this big trunk or treat out in our parking lot uh, and we literally have hundreds of people coming to, um, to go around each of the cars with an open truck and uh, show how they're dressed and receive candy. Now, is that serving? Of course it is. It's serving because it shows children in a real way that we care for them. This is an event especially for them and they get dressed up and they're proud of their costumes and we're eager to share the love of God that comes through giving, which is what we do with the candy and the service on that day. We have a marvelous uh, Holy Saturday tradition. It's called extravaganza. And again, hundreds of families from the community come to our campus. We hide Easter eggs. They go out, hunt Easter eggs. And of course, there are a lot of other activities and games, um, tables with uh, all kinds of uh, coloring opportunities, all for children and for their parents. Is this a way of serving people? Of course it is. What we're doing is telling them that they're important. And no matter what their background is, no matter where they come from, whether they're inside of our congregation or just walking off the street, we've never seen them. Serving gives them joy. And just as important, it gives those who use their hands to serve a great deal of joy as well. It is indeed the fulfillment of Jesus' command to love your neighbor as yourself. Because as we use our hands to serve, we also are served in return. This has been a tradition uh, for hundreds of years in the United Methodist Church. Uh, we have started hospitals, we've started schools, we've started colleges and universities. We have found ways institutionally across the United States uh, to be in service to people who have all kinds of needs. And we determine what those needs are, and then we collaborate with others, sometimes with nonprofits, other times with agencies in the community. Uh, we've actually started hospitals. Uh, one of my former congregations began a hospital in their local community, all in the name of service. When we serve, there's no limit to the love and grace that's released in this world. When we serve, we are truly loving our neighbor. When we serve, we are truly changing another person's heart and changing our own as well. When we serve, we are truly changing the world. Would you pray with me, please? Worshipful God, I confess that I don't follow you as closely as I should. I want to help. I want to show your love. I want to serve. Remind me that I can serve you in big and small ways. 
I can volunteer my time to the food pantry, to teaching Sunday school, to taking a friend to the doctors. I can help you in little ways, smiling at my neighbor, showing your love by listening to someone's story, really hearing them. I can serve you with others. I can do short-term mission trips. I can be in a prayer chain. There are so many ways to serve you. Remind me, encourage me, lead me. I know that you love me. I know that you love everyone else. As I have the strength, let me follow you and serve others. Let me be your hands. Let me be your feet. Let your spirit move my body so that I can bring your love to all I meet. That would be such a blessing. Thank you for allowing me humble, weak, flawed person that I am. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your strength, your encouragement, your example. Eternally grateful. And thank you for the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hey, thanks for joining us for worship today. And uh, you might ask, is it possible to serve all by myself? Well, it is. Uh, we have folks who are homebound who will make calls to other folks just as a way of connecting and spreading the love throughout our congregation. But here's maybe one of the takeaways that I would really like you to consider. It's usually a lot more fun to serve with other groups of people because you have the, uh, the fun of sharing the burden of the service itself and also sharing the joy. If you live anywhere near our 1231 Pyramid Way campus in Sparks, Nevada, I would love for you to come by uh, just if nothing else, just to observe what happens on a day when our food pantry is open or just to observe what happens when we are selling pumpkins to the community or any one of a number of other ways that you're gonna see people serving. And then maybe you will catch the spirit and want to serve as well. A lot of times it's just a matter of a simple um, five to 10 minute training and you are ready to be set free to use your hands and your heart to love your neighbor, to serve that neighbor and to change the world. Go change the world. Thanks for joining us here at Sparks UMC. You can connect and join the conversation on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. To receive the weekly emails that share what's happening in the Sparks UMC community, scan the QR code on the screen, or let us know by filling out the Connect card on our website. If you would like prayer, email us at sparksumcprayers at gmail.com or scan the code. We are grateful for your support of the ministry and mission of Sparks UMC. We'll see you next time. Be blessed.